This is a film about the building of our sailing boat, Wild Honey. She was built by Lawrence and me, I'm Emma, on a farm in a really beautiful part of the UK. In our last film, you had a chance to look around her, and we thought we'd show you a bit of the backstory and how she came, in an unusual way, to be launched on the river where we live. We converted a couple of the farm buildings into little workshops and made various bits of the boat in them. We used three in total, including what was Lawrence's sail loft at the time, where we laminated and assembled our rotating wing mast, all 17 metres of it. It took quite a long time, years in fact. Now looking back, it seems hard to imagine how we did it. But that's why we decided to start the story at the beginning, because we seem to be quite a long way into it already. The ancient footage that you're watching is a bit of a blast from the past. It's not got great sound and it's badly digitised, so I'm sorry about that. But it is a good record of the days and the months involved and the places that she was built in. We used an old cow shed to build the hulls, using strip plank cedar, and back bagging the laminates using an old milking machine. We used pretty simple methods to build what was at the time a pretty high-tech boat. Lawrence spent a long time figuring out how just the two of us could build wild honey and get her to the water. If you're interested in the line to these hulls and catamaran hull design more generally, Lawrence has just made a film which takes an in-depth look at them. Have a look on our channel and you'll find it there. We were also using carbon and Kevlar in critical places to give the strength needed for really lightweight structure. Eventually we transported the hulls and all the beams and bulkheads to a polytunnel on a neighbouring farm where wild honey was finally put together. We only just got her out of the shed mind. It was a bit of a squeeze. our friends and some pretty basic arrangements to get the hulls down there. With a bit of persuasion and many hands, we got there in the end. And then we did it all again, for hull number two. Yeah, sure. Yeah, start turning now. from here took another couple of years, with more cold and wet winters. These are the water tanks. This is the cockpit here, so this is all going to be outside. From here, back. This is my ensuite. There were also many sunny summers. Lots of hot and sweaty days. The boat. The boat is now covered. Building and sanding and fairing. These are the outboard brackets. The boat hasn't got any diesel engines in it. Making all the boat bits. Laying the teak. And a paint job, lovingly applied by roller. 
but eventually she was ready to take the plunge and to be launched. So it was that launch day finally came. This is the journey from the farm to the water. It was pretty unusual for a 40-foot catamaran. She lives on her mooring here on the river now and has been snug as a bug for the past few years. But we have all this footage of the big day and thought you might like to share her journey down to the water. One of the things Lawrence had to teach himself in the process of building our boat was welding. Not an obvious one, perhaps, but we needed a cheap way to transport the boat from the polytunnel down to the water. He made some really big cradles out of steel and we attached them to a hay trailer. Our neighbour and farmer was feeling pretty brave and took on the challenge of driving the boat on the back of his trailer down a couple of steep fields to the water. Now we're a bit older and I'm not sure that either of us would take on such a big challenge. But at that time we were younger and we were chasing our dream and this was the only way we could really afford to do it. So down the field she went on the back of a hay trailer. We got through the first obstacle and we are now facing the ultimate test that we've got to go across the footpath. We had a trusty crew to help see us safely there, who helped to push and pull and dig, all at the right moments. We didn't have the benefit of a large bank balance. We were just making ends meet and we had to make literally everything to save money. Watching this footage back, I can honestly say that I have been moved to tears, remembering and suddenly recognising the enormity of the dream that we had and all the work it took to achieve it. We were supported by our closest friends and family, who met all of our plans with healthy scepticism. Getting Wild Honey finished and to the water was a labour of love, after which we didn't set sail to far-flung tropical islands as we thought we might. We paused to start a family, build a modest little home and concentrate on our careers. But Wild Honey has remained in our hearts and we've spent years now sailing our boat in the southwest, which actually is a fantastic cruising ground. Now our daughter's grown up a bit and we're getting ready to go further afield. And so we're going to be making a few changes to the boat. We're going to be making some films about the things that we're doing. So why not follow us along the way? Nervous now. Let's see if it floats. It's a lot of my life, it's just sitting right here. We're, we're just hopefully about to float. Well, honey, may God bless all who sail in here and may she have a safe and prosperous life. Be safe and never come to any harm. Oops. Well, honey, 